You are traveling through the intercentury story of Bulgari. The extraordinary journey of Satiria Bulgari from a silversmith to the jewelry maestro. Satiria Bulgari, whose original name was Satirius Bulgaris, was born on the 18th of March, 1857 in Paramythia, a small Greek town in Epirus, the coastal region of northwestern Greece and southern Albania, very well known for the creations of its silversmiths since the Byzantine era. The Bulgaris were a family of highly skilled goldsmiths, specializing in manufacturing silver jewelry, belt buckles and sword sheaths. Since his early youth, Satiria proved to be lively and ambitious, showing a visionary artistic flair as well as an inquisitive mind. I can vividly recall my childhood, the bitter taste of the Greek syrup, the juicy smell of the marmalade jar, good old days. Satirio was the only survivor among 11 siblings. Surprisingly, his name means the savior. Indeed, he survived the conflict started in 1873 under the Ottoman rule, the destroyed Paramythia. The fire was catastrophic. It destroyed Paramythia and the family shop, where, thanks to my father, I discovered my craft skills. For four entire years, father and son traveled between Greece and Albania to sell their creations, without stopping in the same place for more than a month. Oh, how cold were those Albanian winters. We got used to living under continuous risk. Optimism was our only bread and butter, but we were determined to find better conditions. I clearly remember the words of my father, Georges. Let's go, my son. Let's leave this country and let's look for a land where we can work in peace and create our own home. In 1877, Satirio and his father moved to the island of Corfu, where they found a more stable environment. We opened our shop in this calm and sought-after destination. Imagine that the famous Empress Sisi used to come here. Nonetheless, I felt that I needed wider perspectives. In fact, together with his mentor Demetrios Kremos, a Macedonian goldsmith, he went to Italy. In 1880, they disembarked in Brindisi and then settled in Naples. Naples, a dynamic place, full of scientism and antiques. Here, Demetrius and I opened a successful small store in Piazza dei Martiri. In fact, someone craved our creations too much. A few months later, they were robbed and for this reason, they decided to leave Naples. The departure to Rome in 1881 was probably the most challenging moment of Satirio's life as an entrepreneur. I arrived in Rome when I was 24, with only 80 cents in my pocket and a dream. It was enough for me to create prosperity. At first, Satirio and Demetrius spent a period full of pitfalls in Rome. They started working as paddlers at the Pincio, the square overlooking Piazza del Popolo, where they sold their metal artifacts. After only three days, they were caught without a license. Satirio quickly found a solution. He made a deal with a Greek spun shopkeeper, who allowed them to display their creations in Piazza Trinità dei Monti. In 1884, Thanks to their first earnings, they opened a shop at 75 Via Sistina. We settled in the heart of Rome, in the so-called Tridente area. I was mesmerized by the sparkle and the cultural heritage of this magnificent city, where I met people from all around the world. 
The two partners broke up after some months. Thanks to his entrepreneurial spirit, Sotirio managed to open his first independent shop at 85 Via Sistina. I worked really hard to make the business grow. I used to wake up at 5 in the morning to forge the silver, until late at night. I truly believed that hard work would pay off. Sotirio's business prospered. He foresaw the potential of reaching his clients even abroad with seasonal stores. The first step of his European expansion was a shop in St. Maurice, a Swiss Alps resort frequented by the European elite. In 1888, at the age of 31, he gladly agreed to an arranged marriage with Elena Bazios, the young daughter of Soterio's parents' neighbors in Corfu. After their wedding on the island, the couple settled in Rome near the shop. A year later, their first son, Costantino, was born, followed by Giorgio and four other children. Throughout the 1880s and the early 1890s, Sotirio's business flourished. He hired both expert artisans from Greece and some of his relatives to manage the increased workload and the expansion. The Bulgari name was present in the most important sales catalogues. I was building the prosperity I had imagined when I arrived in Rome with only 80 cents. And I had every intention of going far beyond. In 1894, Sotirio opened a new shop at 28 Via dei Condotti, a strategic sales point to meet the needs of the pilgrims on their way to the St. Peter's Basilica. Thanks to his business vision and client understanding, Sotirio exploited the change in taste and demand. In fact, the sign of the new condotti shop, S. Bulgari Argenteria Artistica Antiquite Curiosité Bijou, shows both the Italianization of his surname and a French style as in vogue at the time. My name echoed in various European corners. I opened shops in San Remo, Bellagio, Naples, Sorrento, and others in Lucerne and Pontresina in Switzerland. <laughs> Imagine how proud I was of this achievement. My know-how and entrepreneurial spirit were appreciated by so many clients all over Europe. In 1908, at 51 years old, he owned seven shops and two seasonal sales points across Europe. Despite his extremely successful expansion, he soon realized the necessity of focusing on one location to increase the sales of jewelry and silver creations. In Rome, where his headquarters were, he moved from 28 to 10 Via dei Condotti. There, in 1905, he unveiled a larger shop, named Old Curiosity Shop, from a Charles Dickens novel. This new shop was a turning point for me. I had made the decision to devote myself to jewellery, with very little experience but lots of passion. I was so astonished to read on the Roman newspaper Il Messaggero that my shop displayed fabulous diamonds and jewels of inestimable value that glitter in the sun. In the 1910s, Sotirio handed down his craftsmanship skills and know-how to his sons Giorgio and Costantino, who gradually took over his role. Giorgio and Costantino inherited and spread my vision worldwide. They further glorified the name Bulgari worldwide. <laughs> I took so many steps since I had departed from Paramithia. I feel so proud because I managed to hand down both my vision and my know-how to my descendants. Sotirio passed away on November 24, 1932, at the age of 75. In 1934, his sons unveiled a refurbished shop at 10 Via dei Condotti. Both its facade and its interior serve to illustrate the entry Negozio, that means shop, in the Encyclopedia Treccani, one of the most prestigious Italian encyclopedias. Giorgio and Costantino and their descendants nurtured Sotiria's creative legacy up to the fourth family generation. They shaped the evolution of Bulgari's creations 
renowned since forever for their distinctive, bold, contemporary and visionary style. Thank you, Soterio. Your star continues to enlighten our creativity, entrepreneurial spirit, excellence and our dreams. <laughs>